Did you know electric skateboarding has been a catalyst for groundbreaking innovations like electric aeroplanes, autonomous tractors, artificial hearts, NASA robotics, kite pulled boats and more. And it all started with a community of passionate mountain boarders. We headed over to Tramper Boards in Nottingham, the place where it all began to unearth the untold story. Oh, don't mind us. Um, do you know what? Um, <laughs> I, I don't... Hiya. How do we get to Tramper? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm Billy. Good to see you. I'm Ailish. Hello. Nice to meet Nora. you. Stop payment. Yeah. Tramper, established in 2003, is the UK's leading electric mountain board manufacturer. The in-house team assemble boards, create incredible content, and develop prototype vehicles that will blow your mind. And they seem to have a pretty good time doing it. Mountain boarding is kind of where it all started. Just hills, no electric involved mountain boarding. Ted kind of started it in his garage at his house, building boards. I think it started off with just certain parts, maybe wheels or bindings, and then it gradually turned into full boards. Tramper has been kind of a leading brand in mountain boarding in the UK and around the world for probably the last 20 years or so now. Can you just fill me in on how this has essentially influenced the whole innovation of electric aeroplanes. Basically, the, the idea was to build a 1,000 watt hour pack as a standalone unit, and you can do anything with that. So we designed a battery pack that is PCB based. So we basically have um, PCBs where a battery management system is incorporated, and we can actually clamp those cells in position. For all you non-tech heads, a printed circuit board or PCB supports and connects the vital components. Think of it like a skeleton. The components are the organs and the electricity is the blood. PCBs are found in pretty much every electric device we have. We basically just keep trying to make different devices electric, whether that be a, a motorcycle that we've taken all the motor out and made it into electric, or a drift trikes, for example, we just bomb around the car park just messing around on these drift tracks, but it's actually come quite useful for testing things on the VESC. In the most basic way possible, you've got batteries and a motor, and for those to communicate, you need the brains, which is the VESC, and the VESC basically just manages all of that, whether the power coming out the battery, the power is going into the motor. That's basically the concept, and then you can apply that to anything. So whether that's a skateboard, whether that's a scooter, whether that's a bike, Benjamin did all the software for it and it was actually Frank who did all the PCB layout. So it was a real sort of team effort between everybody to get to where we are here. Yeah, so Benjamin Vedder is kind of an innovator in the electric tech space and he creates this crazy thing which is a VESC, which is a kind of world leading speed controller, which is the brains of so many electric different devices. The VESC project itself or the VESC is, it's about education also. It's about going public and, and bringing technology out there, helping people. VESC stands for Vetter Electronic Speed Controller. So Benjamin Vetter was actually the brain behind it. He wanted to electrify um, robots and um, skateboards, and he found no motor controller that would suit. I think when I started with motor control was back in like 2009 or so, when I was at the Charlemagne University, and I was building, I was spent a lot of time at the hackerspace there when I built small robots that different, did different things and one of the most tricky problems to solve was getting a good motor controller. Then at some point uh, a friend made a bachelor thesis on an electric longboard and I helped him get the motors running and uh, he used one of my controllers that I had back then. And it got better and better and better and finally we had the unit, the VES6, and that can drive pretty much any motor on, that exists on this planet. To put this in perspective, this tiny little box can be used to drive anything from a smoothie blender to an electric aeroplane. Some people tell me, ah, what's so special about spinning a motor? But it's like somebody would tell you, what's so special about a smartphone? I mean, we could do phone calls back in the 1920s. Yes, you could, but there's a huge difference in between a phone from 1920 and a smartphone from 2020. And it's the same with electric motors. Um, there's so many things you can do from traction control to defining the torque, how you start up motors smoothly, how you brake, shove back energy into the battery. I know that the VESC has obviously been involved in some really cool other projects that like I can list off like NASA robots, multi-copters, rocket launches, artificial hearts, 
um, yes. world's biggest 3D printed house, dive bots, I could go on. They use it for all sorts of different things from skateboards like diving equipment to electric surfboards to hydrofoils to RC cars to airplanes, electric cars, so probably a couple of hundred different uses as well. As I mentioned before, like the 3D printed houses, I had no idea that they used Vascon 3D printed houses. So it's just insane to see all of those things, what it's used for. That's really, really exciting. How many projects do you think there are out there with the Vesk technology being used? Probably individual users, like hundreds of thousands, as far as I can tell. We have one company, they make kites that actually pull container ships over the ocean. So that kite obviously needs some motors, which will actually somehow control or steer it with an algorithm behind it. Uh, that Visual Heart is something, uh, there is a company in Sweden that makes one. Uh, they also found a, uh, found a vesk in the source code and then trying to make their own motor controller as well. Without somebody like Vetter, you, you couldn't pull something off like that. It's not possible. My main full-time job now is making an electric airplane at the startup in Gothenburg, also making the motor controller there. It's actually the one that sits on the table over there, the black box there. It's a 400 kilowatt version of the motor controller. <laughs> the battery is there actually for mainly for the long boards, but we use uh, the same packs on the prototype rig for the plane as well. So this is for the mountain boards. You probably saw that. Yeah. And essentially for the rig in the plane, we just have this uh, top and bottom plate and we make them bigger. So we have modules with like six of these in each module. And then we have uh, six of those packs. We have 30 of those for each propeller. The range of the airplane will probably be around 400 kilo kilometers and some of that we need for the reserves. So if everything goes according to plan, then maybe in, in 2026 or so, we will have one version that works. But I think the challenging part in plane is probably going to be the batteries and to bring that through certification. It has a lot of advantages that nobody sees yet. Um, advantages could be that pollution around airports, uh, noise reduction, service is a lot less. It's super cheap to service an electric plane in comparison to service a turbine driven plane. Probably 70% of all routes are short routes. If you guys nail this, this, this could change air travel as we know it. It's just the beginning. It's really exciting. And I think also the projects with Trump are really exciting. I mean, those Mount boards and long boards is so, so fun to ride them in the forest. So this is definitely one of the really exciting things. The Vesk wouldn't be what it is today without the open source community. What does that mean and why is it awesome? I'll let Frank give you the spiel. He wants the software to be open, so he doesn't want to create black boxes, which is quite important because the problem we face these days is that software somehow determines a lot um, of how we live, who we meet, how we vote, um, so we are influenced by software a lot and it is in every portion of our life these days. And if these soft bits of software are black boxes, then I can swear or promise you that the end of democracy isn't far. It kind of evolved <laughs> from when I released it. So my original intention with making it and releasing it, I didn't had no clue that it would get to where it is now. Innovation is usually brought around because of warfare. So for example, you know, when war comes around, you know, we had like the Land Rovers, instant coffee, duct tape, uh, the internet that came around because of war, because of conflict. But the really lovely thing about this is innovation is happening because of pure passion. Yeah, that is really exciting. But I think probably one reason that it's like that is like it's hard, easier to get funding and get paid if you work for the military than if you do this. I mean, I think it would be nice if you can find a way for society to support those passion, passion projects a bit more. Well, there you have it. That was just a snippet of the awesome innovations that are changing the future of electric mobility and the world as we know it. Tramper, Frank and Veda have only touched the surface on what's to come, and it's a really exciting space to watch. So brace yourselves, because you heard it here first. The future is electric. <laughs>